Good day, Wonder Nurses. I'm Nurse Anne. Today, I will discuss about the anatomy and physiology of urinary system, as well as diseases like glomerulonephritis and urinary tract infections such as cystitis, urethritis, and pyelonephritis. So if you're ready, let's start. Urinary System the function of the urinary system is to filter blood and create urine as a waste byproduct. The main organs in this system are the kidneys, ureter, bladder, and urethra. Let's first discuss the kidneys. It is the two bin shaped organs in the renal system. The main role of the kidneys is maintaining hemostasis. Functions First, we have waste excretion. It filters waste products from food, medications, and toxic substances. Two major compounds that the kidneys remove are urea and uric acid. Urea is the result from the breakdown of proteins while uric acid is from the breakdown of nucleic acid. Second, it releases hormones to regulate blood pressure if necessary. Third, it produces an active form of vitamin D which promotes strong and healthy bones. It maintains the overall fluid balance. Fifth, it controls the production of red blood cells. And lastly, it regulates and filters minerals from the blood. We also have nephrons. It is the functional unit of the kidney. Each kidney is made up of million filtering units called nephrons. Each nephron includes a filter called glomerulus and a tubule. The glomerulus filters the blood and the tubule returns the needed substances to the blood and removes waste. Next, ureter. It carries filtered waste products from the kidney to the bladder. The muscle walls of the ureter tighten and relax to move the urine down to the bladder. Bladder. It is a hollow organ that stores urine. When a certain amount of urine is rich, the bladder signals the urge to urinate. Lastly, urethra. It is the small tube connecting the bladder to the outside of the body. During urination, the brain will signal the bladder muscle to tighten. Then it will also signal the sphincter muscles to relax to let the urine exit the bladder through the urethra. Let's now proceed to some diseases. Urinary tract infection. It is an infection in any part of the urinary system. The most common cause is the bacteria from the large intestine, which is the Escherichia coli. Women are more likely to get UTI because the urethra is closer to the anus and it is shorter compared to men. That makes it easier for the bacteria to enter into the urinary tract. Types since it can happen in different parts of the urinary tract, each type is based on which part is infected. Cystitis. It is the infection of the bladder. You might feel that you need to pee a lot or it might hurt when you pee. You might also have lower belly pain and cloudy or bloody urine. Urethritis. It is the infection of the urethra. This can cause a discharge and burning sensation when you pee. Lastly is pyelonephritis. It is the infection 
of the kidney. This can cause fever and pain in the upper back or side of the body. Diagnostic test, urinalysis, management, antibiotics are the most common treatment of UTI. Drink plenty of water to facilitate in the flushing of the bacteria from urinary tract. Pain reliever if necessary and proper hygiene. Our last topic, glomerular nephritis. It is a group of diseases that injured the part of the kidneys that filters blood, specifically the glomerulus. When the kidney is injured, it cannot remove waste products and extra fluid in the body. If left untreated, it can lead to kidney failure. Types Acute and Chronic Glomerulonephritis In acute glomerulonephritis, most often it occurs as a complication of a throat or skin infection with streptococcus. While in chronic glomerulonephritis, it is characterized by long-term inflammation and scarring of glomeruli. It develops slowly over several years. Key manifestations Hematuria, proteinuria, hypertension, and edema. Diagnostic tests Urinalysis or urine microscopy will be done, but kidney biopsy is the confirmatory test. Management includes medications like corticosteroids is prescribed to suppress the immune system. A diet that is low salt, low protein, and low potassium. Diuretics to reduce the swelling. Antihypertensive medications. And dialysis if necessary. Thank you for listening. I hope you learn and understand something. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.